There's a lot of people that ask me, like, what's the main thing that I can do to sound like you on funk guitar or whatever? And then I'll hear them play, and there's two common things that I hear that I will initially try to get somebody to just tweak a little bit. And again, it doesn't mean that it's better because it's the way that I do it. It's just different. It's the way that I do things. And uh, normally that's what people are asking. How do you do what you do? It doesn't mean that it's better or worse. It's just the way that I do things. Uh, the number one thing is timing. Most people, their time is not amazing and they're not as focused on their rhythm and the, the right hand is a little bit sloppy. So the number one thing I always tell people to practice is play with a metronome, get your timing exactly on, and just try to get this motor thing running where you just... No matter what style you're playing, having that motor going, being able to play in time is really... It's still the same technique as... Just having a steady down up, down up, down up approach really then also makes it so you don't have to think about what is the strumming pattern. It's just anytime it's one, E, and, uh. Anytime it's a number or an and, it's a downstroke. Anytime it's an E or an uh, it's an upstroke. Makes it super simple. You don't have to think about it. Um, and then the next thing is a lot of times what I'll see people do with their left hand is they, do, they don't do enough muting and they hold on to the notes a little too long, for my taste. So, for example, sometimes, and, and they'll play uh, really thick voicings. So sometimes I'll see somebody playing like uh, a, a, fifth, a sixth string rooted A7 chord like this. And they'll play the entire voicing and they'll do something like this. There, the right hand thing, I had the motor running, but that doesn't feel good to me because the left hand nuance is not doing any favors for the fact that my right hand is still playing in time. So even though my right hand is together, the next thing is to build some nuance in the left hand. And one of the biggest things is to pay a little more attention to the releases of notes. So if I were to just go, it doesn't sound very good, but if I go, I'm still just thinking about that same A7 shape. I'm just breaking it up into different little pods and just picking out different notes and little two, three string sections of that voicing. So I'm thinking of and even adding some of those little extra notes from the scale or just, I, I'm still thinking about the same voicing but I changed my fingering to being more like this and then adding a little bit of that sort of thing in there. The less notes I play, the more it creates space for the other people in the band. If I'm covering too much low end, it's gonna get in the way of the bass player or the keyboard player. Keyboard players have 10 fingers and they have a lot of notes they can cover. They can get a huge sound. The guitar doesn't always need to play that role. Most of the time in funk guitar playing, the role is a lot more of a percussive role and sometimes filling out some harmonic space. So I can still get the, I can still accomplish the harmonic sense of A7, but, and also kind of cover the, uh, the role of like what bongos or congas or a shaker would do with this thing. So if I think of taking the role of a percussion player and a little bit of some keyboards for harmonic information and mixing them together, it kind of creates what I do. So I'm always thinking about those two things, bringing them together. So here's that A7 chord, right hand motors running. I'm breaking up the vo this voicing with this extra thing into uh, just little, little smaller voicings within that. So here's an example. up a lot of times just sounding more like a riff which is which can be cool because then you come up with a specific part that makes it feel signature to the song rather than just like which is 
like, I don't know what you're doing. You're just jamming on an A7. But if you go, that feels like a phrase. It's a musical phrase that can be like the signature thing for a verse of a song or something. And if that's the part you play, it has more intentionality. And it's a phrase that makes sense that somebody can grasp onto. It doesn't just sound like jamming on A7. So um, I guess that turned into three tips. Uh, right hand, motor running, left hand, bring in the nuance by not, not feeling like you need to play every note and every string. Break up your voicings into little different sections. And then the third thing is just play musical phrases. Um, when you play musical phrases, it helps enhance a song overall. It makes it feel less like something that's just going on and it gives it a little more intention.